Okay, let's uh, let's pray. Father, we thank you. Thank you for this day, Lord. Thank you for all that you are to each one of us. We praise you. We worship you, Father God. Lord, we commit today's uh, presentations to your mighty hands, and uh, we pray that, uh, Lord, you will um, your spirit will continue to speak, Lord, to us, and also, God, we pray that even as um, students present, Lord, and that you will speak through them, Lord, as well. We thank you. We commit this time into your mighty hands. In Jesus' master's name, we pray. Amen. Amen. Okay, so um, Anthony will present first. So Anthony's sermon topic is Negotiating for a Better Future. And the sermon title is By the Future. Okay, so um, Anthony, if you're ready, you can check your mic and switch on the camera. And then um, you can start. Hey. Good morning, sir. Good yeah, morning, we, all. We can we can hear can you, hear but uh, um, yeah, but we can't see you. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Great. We can see you now. Okay. So where are you from, Anthony? Um, I'm Nigeria. In Nigeria. Okay. Wonderful. Okay. Let me just uh, get the timer ready. So. Okay. And what time is it in Nigeria right now? Um, this four thirty. Four thirty a.m. Wow. <laughs> okay, I appreciate you joining. Okay. Um. Yeah. So, I you're ready? Uh, do you have any yes. presentation? Any PowerPoint? Yes. You do. Okay. You wanna? Yes. Uh, yeah. You can share that. Okay. So we can check that out. Um, okay, maybe you need to start the slideshow, then you can get, well, um, now it's gone. Okay. Um, we we can't what see it right now? now. No, we're not able to see the presentation right now. Yeah, uh, we can see it now, but it's in the presenter mode. Okay, we'll go with this. Okay, um, we we'll go with this. Okay. Okay. Um, shall I start your timer? Um, just a sec. Okay. 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 Time. Your time starts now. Okay. Go ahead, please. Okay. Well, good morning once again. Thank you for uh, this opportunity to present. So my summon topic is um, by the future, negotiating for a better future. So I will be starting with, um, we all know the biblical story of um, Esau and Jacob. So my text, my scripture reading will be taken from um, Genesis chapter 25, 20 to 34. But I will start from Genesis chapter 23. And the Lord said to her, two nations are in your womb. Two peoples shall be separated from your body. So what this text means, that two nations, it means there are Jacob nations and there are Esau nations. Two people, there are Esau people and there are Jacob people. So I'll move on to the next slide. Then we now move on to the value system. So value system means... Uh, Two people can be born under very similar circumstances, go through similar experiences, and arrive at different destinies. So we see that people that go through the same, that went to the same classroom, taught by the same teacher, 
went through the same uh, system of teaching yet still end up coming out differently. So even in corporate bodies, organizations that start the, um, the same day, that start uh, with the same vision, they don't end up in the same destination. Even in nations, we see nations that uh, have almost the same dates of independence. They have different value system. They arrive at different destinies. So paradigms. Paradigms is like um, a form where, for some reason, you see things differently. So the by uh, the the Oxford Dictionary defined paradigm as a distinct set of concepts through which uh, a set of concepts or thoughts, patterns, including theories, research, method, postulates, and standards for which constitute legitimate contributions to a field. So we see that people see life from where they are. If for some reason you sit in scarcity, you will see scarcity, even if in your environment abounds in wealth. So we can see how, like, let me use my country, Nigeria, for example, if not for the white men, we were sitting on oil. We did not discover oil by ourselves. It was somebody from somewhere that came and discovered oil, which means we were sitting under abundance of wealth. We did not even know until somebody came and discovered it for us. So the paradigms of Esau and Jacob. So when you do a character study of Esau and Jacob, you will see that their paradigms were very different. Though they grow up in the same environment, but yet they have different talents, different goals. So the challenge today is not to discover and use your gifts and talents, but to use them in such a way that you don't end up disadvantage in your negotiations with life because every day when you live life you negotiate so we now look at i'll be looking at um um a text from genesis chapter 25 verse 27 so the boys grew and esau was a skillful hunter a man in the field but jacob was a mild man dwelling in the tent so we know that growth is like a microscope when it is focused on a seemingly order and fine object, we discover images that contradict the first impressive image, images of what we saw. Growth expands character. We can see that um, immediately somebody gives birth to a baby. You see how cute that baby looks, very cuddling, sweet, and beautiful. But immediately there is growth. There is what we call character amplification. Then you now start to see different traits of character. So how um, hunting without roasting. The Proverbs chapter twenty, uh, Proverbs chapter twelve, verse twenty-seven. The lazy man does not roast what he took in hunting. The definition of a lazy man is in the reference of a hunter who works hard to hunt for a game but fails to take his product to a next level hunting is what you do as your profession like singing and building while roasting is what you do with what you gain from hunting like generating a secondary income from your primary income as in the case of uh, esau and jacob we know that esau i'm not uh, esau was like the lazy man here he does not refine what he took from hunting. But Jacob was the one that refines what Esau did with his hunting. This is the negotiation part in Genesis chapter 25, verse um, 31 to 32. But Jacob said, sell me your birthright as of this day. And Esau said, look, I am about to die. So what is this birthright to me? Every negotiation is a give and take affair. You offer what you have to get what you need. The negotiation of Esau and Jacob was informal negotiation. In their own culture, Jacob, Esau and Jacob birthright was 
was the benefit a child received by virtue of their birthright and heritage. Esau was the firstborn of the father of his father Isaac, and as such was in uh, was first in line to receive the blessing of the family's inheritance. So why will Esau negotiate so poorly? It's not as if that if he did not uh, eat that food, he's going to die. He's not going to die. Maybe because of uh, pressure, he came back from hunting and then he did not have anything to cook. So how did Jacob buy the future? We see that buying the future is very, very cheap. Jacob trades with Esau. He exchanges what is seen for what is not seen. He trades his present possession for the opportunity of the future. Jacob does not wait for the future to happen before he starts planning, thinking about his next moves. He, anticip he anticipates, trends, and triggers the activities that will participate, that will precipitate the future. The future belongs to those who use their mind to design what should happen after today. Creative um, imagination is the ability to see what will happen in the next 20 years ahead of time. The future will be always be cheap if you could anticipate which stock to buy or which real estate you would ex or which real estate would be most expensive in the next 20 years. So these are different paradigms of two different people who grew up in the same environment. So I'm on the last slide here. So Is Esau sells his future. So people that uh, uh, don't develop what they have, like the Esau people, they always tend to sell their future and they don't, um, they don't, what's the word now? They don't uh, value uh, spiritual, uh, they don't value spiritual things. So Esau failed to develop his skills so he failed in that okay, crucial one negotiation. more minute we, Anthony, okay, one minute more thank you he failed to uh negotiate crucially with jacob because he had nothing to present just like how most of uh our african countries do we sell our crude oil and then go back to buy the raw materials back and import it again so the most important lessons in life is that you don't negotiate when you are hungry and don't negotiate when you're tired reprocess your thoughts and options call for a timeout then always value what you have and don't exaggerate your need negotiate the offer down and then try and always buy the future thank you very much thank you anthony thank you for for that i think it was a typical marketplace a message for the marketplace a message for anyone um i mean it's it's obviously applicable for everyone but um typically for those in the marketplace i think more so um but a powerful reminder of uh, you know uh, of values a powerful reminder of choice a powerful reminder of uh, um, the reality of uh, the practical reality of life. Um, yeah, thank you. Thank you for sharing that. Okay. Um, are the others there? Um, who are the others? Prabhu and Samuel Madhu. Okay, they're not here. Okay, so I guess they're not ready to present. So we. I think we'll yeah we'll close here. I'll probably I'll just text them. I'll tell them. Um, yeah. So anyone else has any questions? Anything that you want to share? Uh, this will be the last class, so we're kind of uh, winding up here. Anyone? No. Okay. Um, also, I just wanted to check. You know, did anyone um, miss out um, the first test? Like, I had one of the students write saying that uh, she wasn't well, 
So, um, and she missed that test. And uh, of course, because it was time bound, uh, there was uh, we were not taking in any responses after that. So, did anyone miss the first uh, quiz um, because of such reasons? Because you were unwell, uh, mainly, you know, because of that. Um, so, what I'll do is I'll open up the first quiz for maybe just a day, and uh, those who missed it can actually um, answer that, right? So uh, maybe I'll just keep it open right from now till maybe early morning tomorrow. So that can be um, completed, right? And also the second quiz, the final quiz is posted. And I think most of you, uh, some of you have started uh, um, you know, submitting that. Uh, so don't worry, you know, uh, I think I had some queries about whether I received the answers, etc. You know, once you receive the confirmation saying that your the answers, responses to your quiz have been submitted, so that's uh, and you receive your marks, that's that's enough, right? So you don't have to bother checking with me again. Um, it it will come. Um, only thing is, it's it's not showing for some reason in your classwork section. It's not showing as something that has been submitted. So don't worry about that. Uh, of course, uh, this is only for online and in-person students. Uh, E-learning students can just ignore this. You have time till the end of the, uh, I mean, till 24th um, to complete, right? OK, so no no more questions, I think, at all. Um, OK, I think Nina, Nina Santosh had uh, that question about, um, about women. Um, it is. Uh, yeah, let me just take that scripture. First Timothy, right? Where, um, yeah, First Timothy chapter two, and where he says, uh, "Let a woman learn in silence with all submission." And I do not permit a woman to teach or to have authority over a man, but to be in silence. For Adam was formed first, then Eve. And Adam was not deceived, but the woman being deceived fell into transgression. Nevertheless, she will be saved in childbirth if they continue in faith, love, and holiness with self-control. Okay, so um, definitely this is uh, one of the complex, you know, passages uh, or set of verses that we see here. Um, so uh, we know from all the other portions in Scripture, like for example, if you look at the you know, if you look at the book of Romans, the last chapter, um, Romans 16, um, starts like this. You know, I commend to you, Phoebe, our sister, who is a servant of the church in Centuria, and that you may receive her in, in, a, in the Lord in a manner worthy of the saints and assist her in whatever business she has need of you. For she, indeed, she has been a helper of many and of myself also. And so, you know, we know of Phoebe, we know of uh, Priscilla, uh, who taught Apollos, Priscilla and Aquila as a couple, they taught Apollos. Then um, there's an also, uh, verse 6, you know, there's also Mary, uh, it says, he says, who labored much for us. And then chapter, sorry, verse 7, he talks about Junia. He says, my fellow men and fellow prisoners, and Junia is actually a, a, a you know, female name, right? Um, and then you go on down to uh, verse 12, you know, there's Tryphena and Tryphosa. Um, and then, you know, Tryphena is, again, a uh, female. Or I, I don't know, one of this, right? Tryphena, or tri mostly Tryphena. Uh, or maybe it's Tryphosa, sorry. So it's a, it's a female name, again. Um, so we see, you know, verse 15, Julia is there, and so on. So we see that there are a lot of people, women, who ministered, OK? Then we go to Acts, we see. Philip, Philip has uh, daughters. Uh, Philip himself, as an evangelist, moved from place to place. And then we read in uh, how the apostles stayed with Philip. Um, I think this is in um, yeah, this is in verse chapter twenty-one. Okay, if you go to chapter twenty-one of the book of Acts, um, talks about uh, with Paul and the team. Uh, it says Paul and the companions, verse 8, okay, chapter 21, verse 8 of Acts. On the next day, who were in Paul's companions, departed, came to Caesarea, 
and entered the house of Philip the Evangelist, who was one of the seven and stayed with them. Now this man had four virgin daughters who prophesied. Okay, so so the the you know it was which means that they prophesied quite consistently and ministered to people in prophecy, and so much so that it was noticed. And you know, it's written here that Philip had four daughters who prophesied. It was not like okay, once they prophesied and that was it. They seem to have had a consistent ministry of uh, uh, prophetic ministry. So we see that um, that is mentioned here, right? So we we know from all this that when we when we see all this, we come to this portion of scripture, then we know that okay, this is an exception. So which means that this is something which is for that time, for that people, for that place. Okay, people, place, for that particular uh, time. And also when we, so this is, um, you know, listen to Timothy, right? Timothy and Timothy is in Ephesus and he's pastoring the uh, church there. So when we read about the history of Ephesus, we see that they had this female deity whom they worshipped, okay, goddess whom they worshipped there. And that goddess was a goddess of fertility, or you know something to do a fertility goddess. So um, they so with that worship they had some immoral, uh, you know, uh, ways of worshiping. They had some uh, ritualistic, physical relationship with other women as part of the worship and so on. So, so this was there in Ephesus, right? So we see that. Um, that was a, uh, that was something that was prevalent in Ephesus. So, and also, there was this teaching which was going around in Ephesus, where the female of the species was seen because of this goddess and the worship of the goddess. The women were seen were portrayed as those from whom truth and doctrine and and everything is received. And uh, and that uh, you know, so so that you know that whole kind of teaching. So uh, so when it comes to the church, now that seems to have kind of become uh, a part of the way, or, or that culture seems to have kind of come in, or threatening to come into the uh, efficient church, right? So Paul is writing and he's saying, you know, I do not permit a woman to teach. Now, why? It's because of that history, right? So this is maybe some of them were in that kind of a, a situation. Uh, some of them were maybe, you know, even uh, in, in the temples and so on uh, of the worship of the goddess. And then the truth and everything, you know, that was portrayed as coming from the goddess onto the women and, and so on. So he's, you know, he's uh, uh, obviously setting that in place. Also, the the fact is that that um, about miscarriage, okay, which means that losing a baby during childbirth, it was because this goddess was a goddess of fertility and uh, so on. So the the thing was, if you you know if you say anything, do anything against this goddess, then this goddess will you know uh, kind of take a revenge or and that will be in this area of childbirth right uh, which means you might lose your you know that kind of fear so uh so he is actually you know in that state because that statement verse 15 seems really out of place you know she will be saved in childbirth you know in all this uh, why is this suddenly inserted so so this was the situation this was the culture in ephesus and therefore, we can conclude that, um, you know, even though it, it seems to be very, uh, very, uh, very harsh, knowing the background of Paul and the teachings of Paul and the team and the companions and the ministry team that Paul, you know, he's uh, kind of commending and thanking in the Book of Romans. We see that this seems a little louder, and this is the this could be the reason we can conclude that. Because of this, that um, you know, this is the instruction that he's giving that church, right? So yeah, so I just wanted to share that Nina is not on the group, but um, not on the not on today's class. Hope she will get to see the video. Um, Prince, did you have? Uh, is Prince in the class? Um, Prince also had some question, but I forgot that question. So 
Is Prince uh, sharing any of your screens? Is Prince also part of the class? Yes, no, maybe. Just put it on the chat. Okay, I can't see anything here. Oh, okay. Yeah. Pastor Prince, Pastor Prince is unmet pastor. Prince is okay, okay, fine. Okay, that's fine. Okay, so um yeah, so with that we come to the end of this um this course of uh, um biblical preaching, right? I, I hope you uh, got something out of it. And um and I just my uh, hope and prayer is that we will continue to be uh, you know communicators of the gospel communicators of the truth right and that we will do so in with all authenticity right and uh, and also uh, and humility right authenticity and humility and uh, may there be much fruitfulness right uh, even as you speak the truth even as you handle god's word um rightly dividing the word of god uh in whatever situations and whatever spheres of influence that the lord might use you right Okay, so we'll stop here. God bless and uh, take care. We'll meet again next semester, hopefully, uh, most of you, right? Uh, okay, thank you so much. God bless. We'll end the class here.